Hello and welcome to Class A, a learning support resource for industrial Class A surfacing. My name is Adam and today's Class A is about basic continuity analysis and tools uh, on a high level. In our last tutorial we talked about different types of continuity but we didn't get into ways of knowing whether your geometry is continuous or not. All Class A surfacing tools provide a few basic tools at least for uh, analyzing curvature. So the first one we're going to talk about is a porcupine analysis. This is the most common method for analyzing smoothness of a curve and to analyze continuity discrepancies between curves and surfaces. Though the porcupine analysis uh, is purely used for curvilinear elements in space, it can also be used to evaluate surfaces by using an intersection plane. Each comb on a curvature analysis graph represents uh, an inverse magnification of the radius at that point. Uh, i.e. The, uh, the longer the comb, the smaller the radius. So, uh, as you can see here, the long red lines represent a small radius or a, a large amount of cur curvature, you might say. So here, as you can see in curve A, a line has no curvature comb because it has no radius. Or better put, it uh, has an infinitely large radius. Um, <coughs> curve B has a constant radius and therefore the combs are all of equal length. Curve C has a varying radius that inverts midway in what's known as an OG or an inflection line uh, or a uh, curvature inversion. Notice that the combs are always uh, on the outside of the curve opposite the radius. If, uh, yeah, that's what I just said. If two curves aren't tangent to one another, their curvature combs will appear broken and won't touch one another at their extremities. This can be hard to see in some cases, so a uh, curvature graph might need to be amplified to really see that. Um, but here we can see that curve A is tangent to curve M because the, uh, the vertical spines on the uh, porcupine analysis are parallel, they're touching. Uh, they're not the same length because the radius changes. You know, the radius at the end of curve A is very different from the radius at the beginning of curve M, but uh, they do move in the same direction and therefore are tangent. Um, now in this case we can see that the radius is the same at the contact point, making these two curves curvature continuous or G2 continuous. The longer combs on the M curve here show that the radius is tighter than in the previous example and that it varies over the length of the curve, but the fact that the radius is the same at the point where they meet makes them curvature continuous. And here, finally, we're showing a full G3 continuous curve as uh, evidenced by the smooth curvature combs. The graph is showing us that uh, not only are the curves tangent, but their radii are equal at the contact point and that the radius is increasing at the same rate when the two curves contact each other. So, another way of using curvature analysis, when I, when I drew this curve it looked perfectly smooth on the screen. I took the time to really adjust it nicely, but the curvature analysis also, well, the curvature analysis shows me that the curve is actually far from smooth. Um, there are lots of dips and lumps in it that may be visible in a final model, if I make one. So by increasing the degree of the curve from degree 3 to degree 5, which I'm going to discuss in a later tutorial, and making some very slight adjustments to the curvature, I could create a curve that looked almost identical on screen, but that was much smoother overall in reality. And so this curve will definitely look better in the final model or on screen or even in print or whatever. So curvature combs are used for curvilinear elements, but uh, on surfaces, one common technique for rapidly evaluating curvature continuity is known as zebra stripes. So uh, G1 continuous surfaces will make themselves very obvious when you turn on the zebra stripes. Because the stripes will break at the points between surfaces, so you can see here that the three surfaces are very obviously separated by a hard break in the zebra stripes. G2 uh, curvature continuous surfaces will yield uh, much smoother zebra stripes, though this technique is very convenient for quick surface checks. I still prefer an intersect line and a uh, curvature comb for deeper analysis. 
since the result is much higher fidelity and generally more reliable. So what I'll do is throw a plane out in space, intersect it with my surfaces, and uh, run a comb analysis on that. Then I can move my plane up and down and look at the curvature across the, uh, the surfaces in more detail. <coughs> but that's because I'm anal retentive. Uh, so, one other means of analyzing curvature across a surface is to map colors across it according to different levels of positive and negative curvature. In this example, a tight curvature, or a small radius, is called out with blue color, and any surfaces that have zero curvature or less, uh, i.e. inverted curvature, appear in red. And I can see wherever OGs happen by looking at the uh, where the light red areas meet the dark red areas. That's where the inflection point is. Uh, so uh, the tools discussed here are all widely available in pretty much all CAD packages. Knowing how to use them will make your surfaces much more reliable as you work with them and uh, help make you much more certain about the result that you're going to get when you finally make a model or a full-scale print or whatever your final output will be. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, happy surfacing.